I am here joined by my co-sponsors and Senate sponsor for our bill that will allow medical reciprocity for medical marijuana, A1374. And I am pleased to be joined by my partner in the legislature, Senator Nick Scatari, who is the prime sponsor in the Senate and has sponsored the Compassionate Care legislation. And also my co-sponsors in the Assembly, Assemblywoman Myla Jacy and Assemblywoman Celeste Riley. And I expect, oh, and Reed Gussier just got here too. We may be joined by others, I'll acknowledge them, and they'll have a chance to speak in a few minutes. Uh, when Brian Wilson, the father of a two-year-old, Vivian, who suffers from Dravet syndrome, a rare form of epilepsy, said to Governor Christie last summer, please don't let my daughter die. Parents, grandparents everywhere, all people who love children understood the sentiment and the need that we as adults feel and have to do anything that we can to help desperately ill and debilitated children have a better quality of life and have their symptoms eased. Medical marijuana is legal in New Jersey, but sadly it is not meeting the needs of very many sick patients. It's fair to say that medical marijuana is forging new ground, but it struggles because it, it seems that the program here in New, New Jersey is more concerned about preventing abuse than it is about making it work for those who need it. The bill we passed last year fixed a flaw and allowed minors access to edibles, but still that's not available, it's not working. We are creating a new class of medical refugees, of people that are moving out of state because they simply cannot get the medicine that they need for their children. Doesn't have to be that way. That's why I've introduced the legislation that will allow the reciprocity so that people who are legal participants in this state and that legally participate in another state program that's recognized by New Jersey would be allowed to carry that marijuana in and have access for their desperately ill children and for the adults that need it. Uh, the, today we are joined not only by my co-sponsors but by mothers, parents of some very sick children who would like to share their stories as to why this is so important, why we need this legislation, why we're urging the governor to support this legislation so that children will have the medicine that they need. So can you imagine politics ruling your medical care? In spring 2013, Jack was hospitalized while weaning off a barbiturate, phenobarbital. After being on it for 13 years, it was very dangerous. He was successfully using medical cannabis high in CBD and also a New Jersey card holder. The risk management team at Hackensack University Medical Center would not allow Jackson to stay in the hospital even though he needed that level of medical care and observation with the withdrawal symptoms he was experiencing. His neurologist and a nurse supervisor had to come into the hospital room in the EMU where he was being monitored and told us to choose between one, staying in the hospital, or two, his life-saving cannabis medicine. Going home was dangerous and staying in the hospital and abruptly stopping the medication while in the hospital was equally dangerous. The cannabis was the only thing stopping his seizures after 14 years, and so we had to choose to go home. On uh, December 2nd, 2013, I helped my precious baby girl as her heart stopped. I listened to my wife a few seconds, a few minutes earlier sing to her, hoping that she would respond and not be brain dead. My daughter Sabina Rose had Dravet syndrome. A catastrophic, a catastrophic form of epilepsy does, that does not uh, respond to medications. She tried and failed six different medications and, it was, and was on four of those at the time of her death. I never thought that I would have to live through the tragedy of my daughter being sick, watching her have countless seizures, and never knowing if this would be the one to take her away from me. I never thought that my daughter would only celebrate one birthday one Christmas, one Halloween, and put her feet in the ocean once. The fact is, Governor Christie, if my daughter had access to compassionate care without the impossible hurdles that have been put in place by legislators, the people that we elect to work for our families, she would be alive today. I set about to obtain the medical marijuana card for Jenna, not realizing I was opening up Pandora's box. For starters, my daughter and I had to travel four hours round trip to a doctor qualified in the program who, at the time, was the only doctor seeing any pediatric patients. 
Next, I searched for a psychiatrist to write a letter of recommendation. This was not an easy task since my daughter had never needed psychiatric help before. I was lucky to be referred to one that was willing to see us in New York City. Lastly, I collected a letter of recommendation from my daughter's pediatrician. All told, this process took me over six aggressive months to finally retain the medical marijuana card for my daughter. The obstacles we experienced this past year to treat our deteriorating daughter has been nothing short of a program set up for failure. The stories are heartbreaking. The problems are many. This program's not working. Hopefully today, with these voices being raised and, and share, the stories being shared, that the governor and the legislature will come together and start to make the changes to make this program function. It's not going to be a straight line to get it to where we want it to be. And in the meanwhile, the easiest, fastest thing is to allow reciprocity so that families can have access while we implement a program and make the changes that we need to change. I thank Linda for inviting me here. I also was contacted by Tina De Silvio. She's a, a member, a, a constituent in my district who you just heard her story about her daughter Jenna. And uh, it's, it, it's extraordinary when we know what the answer is as mothers. We have a sick child and we know the answer. And government regulations are stopping you from getting the answer to actually improving the quality of life of your child. We have clearly issues here that we know what they are. Affordability issues, we have access issues, and we have um, control issues, product control issues. These are things that we can solve. These are problems that we can solve. So I stand here with my fellow legislators saying that I will join this effort and this problem will be solved. I ask you to go back to your legislators, all of you are, that are here, I ask you to also write to your to your um, legislators and to your senators and, and also the governor because ultimately it's going to be on his desk, isn't it? And we need his support. So with that being said, I thank you very much for coming out today and thank you for your support. I think pretty much everything that needs to be said has been said and I think what you need is our continued support of these efforts. I just want to read a very brief statement um, about Vivi, Vivi Wilson. Um, Vivi Wilson's grandparents, uh, and she suffers from Dravet, live in my district, in Florham Park. After unnecessary and undue delay, the governor finally signed legislation that we brought before him that was designed, as you know, to expand the availability of medical marijuana, marijuana to minors. But for Vivi, it was not enough. She suffers from a rare form of epilepsy, something you've heard about earlier from um, parents, Dravet syndrome, which has subjected her to hundreds of seizures every day. It's a life-threatening condition, and even though she is a registered medical marijuana patient, our state's restrictive laws and the medical community's unwillingness to participate is preventing her from getting the help she needs. Vivi's parents are talking about moving to Colorado so that Vivi can get the treatment she needs. I'm a parent and a grandparent, and I have grandchildren who live here in New Jersey. The thought that their parents, my son and my daughter-in-law, would have to leave our family, their doctors, friends, their support system, and move across the country to get treatment for one of my grandchildren is unbelievably impossible for me to imagine and unconscionable and unnecessary, should be unnecessary. And therefore, I'm asking all of you, for Vivi, for her parents, for the families represented here, and others who need the medicinal benefits of mar medical marijuana and who are being unreasonably denied it, to stand up for what's right, to tell the governor to sign the legislation that will expand the medical marijuana law so that Vivi, her family, and all those in similar positions can get what they need without having to leave the state of New Jersey to do so. We should not have regulations that make a law less compassionate and less caring. And oftentimes we see that these reg regulations are indeed uh, onerous, especially for the recertification. I'd like to see us uh, do away with the recertification. Imagine somebody with MS have to recertify to the state that they have MS. 
Um, and, uh, and also the doctor registry seems to be not working because a lot of doctors aren't signing up and uh, oftentimes doctors are outside of the health uh, network. So we need to streamline the, the regulations. We're not expanding the program, we're just facilitating so that the program can indeed be compassionate and caring. And I stand shoulder to shoulder with Linda and the other fine uh, sponsors uh, to make that happen in New Jersey. Thank you. It is rare, I've been in the, the legislation, this is now my 13th year. And I really, when I was standing there, I was thinking to myself, never since I've been down here have I been embarrassed and actually borderline ashamed of our state. This is, we all know, this isn't about what's best for kids or folks in need. This is about politics. And we all know who's standing in the way here. The governor who's a, a few feet up the hall. I just want to uh, congratulate Linda and Nick for taking the leadership on this. It's unacceptable. We have to do whatever needs to be done to make this available. And, and all I can say is on behalf of everybody, we will do what we can. But please, Governor, if you are listening, listen to these folks. Have a heart. I was thinking of the biblical quote, whatever you do for the least of my brothers that you do unto me. How can anybody with a heart block this? So we are on your side. We will do what we can. And, Hey, I just want to thank you all for your courage. Thank you. These stories are tragic and they are unnecessary. We can fix this and we can do it now. We stand together with the parents who have gathered and stand for the children whose pictures are before us. Stand up to this administration and say, change this law, make the medical marijuana program work. Let's not create any more medical refugees in this state. Let's not ask families to be uprooted like the Wilsons are, are and others have done to get the help that they need for their children. We can do this and we will continue to move forward. I look forward to the bill that provides reciprocity being passed and getting to the governor's desk so that it allows us the time for these changes to be implemented and people can get the care and relief that they need.